for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic which stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just a reminder to silence your cell phones. Um, rem documents are available for review down on the end next to Commissioner Karski. And Craig Dewey is here this morning um, and can help you if you need a listening device. That takes us to routine business. I'd consider a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item is to uh, approve the commission meeting minutes from September 3rd, 2019. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item are bills to be paid in the amount of $4,038,332.49. Pay the bills. Second. Motion and second. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. There's a number of reports that I would commend for review. Um, data from the mobile crisis team, annual stats through July. Minnehaha County Highway Construction Project update for August 2019, Siouxland Library Board of Trustees agenda for, 2000, for July 2019, Minnehaha County Sheriff Office report for August 2019, and the Public Defender Advisory Board meeting minutes for March 2019. Takes us to item five, personnel actions. I'd consider a motion to approve routine personnel actions. So move. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item is a special personnel action to approve the conversion of Michelle Boyd from variable hour to full-time sheriff's office programs and services manager, Carrie Deaver. Good morning, Carrie Deaver from Human Resources. Um, I'm asking for your approval of this um, conversion for Michelle Boyd to go from variable hour to full-time. The reason it's showing up as a special commission action request is because the recommended salary is above the hiring range for full-time employees. What this comes down to is this would not be a special commission action request if there hadn't been a break in service from full time. So the salary is very equitable with other people and for the position. Thank you. Any questions? We would move for approval. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay, that takes us to the next item. Um, which is to consider a motion to approve an update to the, I the county's IT policy and the county's policy and procedures manual to include the cybersecurity incident handling and response plan. Carrie Deaver. This was an item that was brought forward by Monty Wadenbach as they were preparing for an upcoming audit, audit so I'm going to pass this one over to him. Good morning. Good, good morning, Commissioners. Monty Wadenbach, Minnehaha County IT Director. Um, <coughs> uh, we have uh, recently uh, created a uh, incident response plan um, just as industry best practice and also to comply with uh, a criminal justice audit that we have coming up. Um, and a quick summary of that policy basically is if you were, uh, if you're a county employee and you lose your mobile device, um, you should contact the IT department so we can take appropriate actions. Um, if at any point in time you feel that your computer has uh, been infected or compromised in any sort of uh, fashion, um, you should unplug the network cable immediately and contact IT. Um, if you have a wireless device, um, you, sh you should power the device down and then contact IT. And then work with IT to basically fill out an uh, incident response um, uh, document to identify um, the, the source of the issue, the, the computers that were involved, um, so we can kind of uh, evaluate how that happened to prevent those kind of incidents from happening in the future. Um, so anyways, uh, that will be um, what we're proposing is adding that to our uh, county uh, policies and procedures manual, as well as a snippet into the uh, employee um, handbook, and then also um, a, a portion of that added to the IT um, appropriate use policy. Questions for Monty? What if you can't remember your password? <laughs> that's, so long as you're the only. I'm, I'm just teasing. As long as everyone. nobody else knows it, that's, <laughs> we can handle that. That might be better than putting on an, a post-it note on all of your. Uh, yep. <laughs> I would rather you forget it than advertise it. 
Well, I just want to thank you for the work on this. This is something actually that I've been helping in my other job a lot of clients work through, and it is certainly best practices, and you know, it's, it's fun to, to joke around about it a little bit, but these are very um, important issues for every entity anymore, trying to make sure that um, we always don't let our guard down, because yeah. there's a lot of people who are trying to um, take advantage of um, open sources to data and, and this kind of information. So I really appreciate your leadership on this and that the policies were both very well drafted. So move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. Any further comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next item, item six, abatements, there are none. Item seven, notices and requests, there are none. Item eight, planning and zoning notices, there are none. Item nine, petition for compromise of lien, there are none. So that takes us to public comment. If there's anyone here today who would like to speak about something that's not on our agenda, this is your opportunity. All right, seeing none, take us to regular business. First item is to consider a resolution of necessity to condemn private real property to complete a highway department project. DJ Boothy. Usually DJ just appears right on cue. That DJ usually does, and he's not here at this particular moment. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we could skip that one item and come back. Okay to be able to visit about that. So we'll move on to item 11, and we'll come back to item 10 when DJ is available. So item 11 is to authorize the chairperson to sign the 2020 Local Emergency Management Performance Grant subrecipient agreement. Joe Bosman, good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Joe Bosman of the Sheriff's Office. Uh, filling in for Jason Gearman, who's the director of, of our emergency management division that has been preparing the subrecipient agreement between the state of South Dakota and Minnehaha County. What was formerly known as the state and local agreement or the SLA, the state likes to change acronyms in the feds so it's now the local emergency management performance grant and what this is is this is the grant that is passed through the state down to Minnehaha County for the two positions that we currently have in the emergency management division uh, for Jason Gearman and Doug Blumker uh, it provides reimbursement of 50 percent of salary and benefits for a certain percentage of time that they spend doing qualifying emergency management duties those duties are spelled out in a work plan a very lengthy work plan um, itemizing uh, meetings, different procedures, planning, uh, mitigation response that is necessary to prepare Minnehaha County in the event of an uh, emergency response. Um, this is an annual thing that um, we have signed in these years past to continue to participate in exchange for our reporting of the duties of the two people that are being reimbursed out of this position. So at this time I'd request authorization for the Commission to sign the 2020 a local emergency management performance grant agreement between Minnehaha County and the South Dakota Office of Emergency Management. Madam Chair, I make a motion to authorize you to sign the 2020 local emergency management performance grant subrecipient agreement. Second. Is there any comments? I'd just like to make one comment. I did have an opportunity to meet with Jason and Joe and a couple of others just to kind of go through this agreement. And for those who wonder what emergency managers do, um, all year long when, you know, we thankfully don't have tornadoes every day or any other, or flooding every day, although this spring it did seem like we had flooding every day. Um, but the Exhibit C to this is a work plan that is very detailed and um, a lot of um, oversight to make sure that we are prepared and that, um, that we are um, doing the things that need to be done in order to um, receive this money. So I just really appreciate uh, the work that and Joe and Jason do to make sure that we are ready in the event of a major disaster. Commissioner Barth. Um, I just want to thank Captain Bosman for helping me with the situation where he uh, kindly uh, uh, dispatched a sheriff's deputy to check on something that was concerning to me uh, and uh, over the weekend. Uh, thank you so very much, Captain. Not a problem. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Any further comments? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So the next item, um, we'll go back to item 10. I saw DJ is here now. Uh, so item 10 is to consider a resolution of necessity to condemn private real property to complete a highway department project. Good morning. 
Good morning, Commissioners. DJ Booth, the Highway Superintendent. Apologize for that. I was on the phone in the hallway there. Uh, as we've talked about last couple meetings, we're working on a project, planning a project for uh, for construction next year, the County Highway 146 uh, reconstruction. And as part of that project, a lot of the right of way out there is 66 feet wide or 80 feet wide. And so we're having to acquire H lot parcels for additional right of way. Uh, most of these parcels are between 10 feet wide or 17 feet wide and run the length of, of the parcel. Um, when we started this project, uh, we needed right of way documents and easements from 40 different property owners. And that included 68 or 62 unique parcels. Uh, we've successfully negotiated the majority of those. At this time, uh, we have 18 remaining parcels owned by eight separate landowners, and uh, we have not been able to successfully negotiate those. It sounds like we're going to be able to get some of those, uh, but to get the process started, uh, we're asking uh, for these 18 parcels that we've passed this resolution of necessity. And, uh, and that states that we need this land to complete the project for next year. I can stand by for any questions. Other questions for DJ? Commissioner Benninga. Uh, DJ, would you remind me when uh, the Highway 146 project is really going to start construction and when you're anticipating that it gets finished? It's uh, slated for 2020 construction, so we're hoping that it probably will start in March or April of next year. And uh, it's seven miles long, and so we're probably going to end up having a two-year construction period. We would like to get the majority of that done in one year, uh, but we might look at different phasing options for uh, just ease of construction and, and phasing for the landowners. Thank you. Any other questions? Commissioner Barth. Um, well, my question would be, there was a dairy operation with seven driveways, and have we come to an amicable agreement with that individual, that f family? Uh, we have been negotiating with that dairy. I'm not sure if one particular parcel has seven access points. I don't think that that's the case. They own actually several different parcels along that stretch of road. And we've negotiated, I think, in good faith and come to terms on a number of them. But I don't know that each individual parcel has come to an agreement as far as, far as the whole operation goes. Madam Chair. Commissioner Parth. Um, I don't think any of us take this kind of action lightly because uh, it is, uh, uh, you know, kind of going in to people's uh, personal lives a little bit. But it needs to be done for the good of the uh, entire county. And so I'll make a motion to uh, authorize the, res uh, the uh, resolution of necessity to condemn private real property. Second. Motion and a second. Any further comments? Commissioner Benica. Uh, the only reason I asked a question, DJ, and I already knew the answer, but the real issue was is I think people need to understand that this county road has got significant travel, and this is a huge safety issue for <coughs> the whole county, and it's going to continue to grow as Brandon grows and Sioux Falls grows, so this needs to get done. Appreciate the comments. All right, motion and a second. Any further comments? Roll call vote, please. Benega? Aye. Karski? Aye. Barth? Aye. Bender? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that takes us down to item 12. To consider a motion to approve a consume and blend alcohol beverage license for an event on September 14th, 2019 at the Isaac Walton League. Olivia? Thank you. The Isaac Walton League is having another um, wedding event. Um, this time it's for Dewey Montgomery and his bride. They would like to supply um, alcohol during their wedding, and in order to do that, they need a consume and blend license. So this would allow them to supply it for their guests, but they could not sell it. Okay, any questions? Commissioner Move for Barth. approval. Second. Motion and a second. Moving for approval. Olivia, uh, we had another uh, request for authorization at the uh, 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 Isaac Walton League. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a separate one. It's not the same. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good times at the Isaac Walton League. Yes. OK, so we had a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item is item 13, consider 
a letter of support for the Ellis and Eastern application for a consolidated rail infrastructure and safety improvements. Carol Muller. Good morning, Carol Muller, Commission Office. Yes, before you today is a request from Ellis and Eastern for a letter of support for the consolidated rail infrastructure and safety improvements application to the Federal Department of Transportation. Uh, joining us today is Dan Kipley from Ellis and Eastern. I am not the expert on railroads, he is, and is going to take you through um, what the letter of support is for and answer any questions that you may have. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Carol. Uh, in front of you is uh, some notes as far as some bullet points and uh, as far as outlining what the Chrissy Grant and what we're uh, um, doing. Uh, the Chrissy Grant uh, is part of the FAST Act of 2015 that President Obama signed, authorizing rebuilding the infrastructure in the U.S. Uh, this uh, round of uh, grant funding is, uh, consists of roughly $244 million, and 25% uh, of, of that, or $61 million, is set aside for rural areas. Uh, the area that the Ellison Eastern run in is running uh, is in a rural area, so we've got our fingers crossed that our grant will be successful, but we're also realistic. Uh, there's uh, approximately a thousand applications that go in for these grants and uh, of those only 20 roughly get granted so that's uh, we got a two percent chance so what I am warning you on is is that there's three different types of grants that uh, are out there for rail infrastructure and so you're gonna see a lot of me over the next five years until we uh, we are successful in, in gaining some grants but in the meantime we're going to do it as, uh, as the little engine that can uh, chug, chug, chug along, and uh, we're going to continue to try to improve our line. But in order to do the, the Brandon to Valley stretch, Valley Spring stretch, it's going to take a, ca a huge capital uh, infusion, and that uh, loan is uh, a stretch that, that needs to be real, but rehabilitated is about 1.3 million a mile, and there's roughly five, six miles there. Uh, we run from mile marker 42.5 to 49. So. Uh, that's a big chunk of that. The other thing you need to know as far as on the Ellison Eastern is, is this is a matching grant. And so uh, we are, the Ellison Eastern will be putting up 51% of the dollars requested. So if, if we're looking at, uh, for round numbers, are we are still retaining all of our engineering and uh, bid numbers. But for round numbers, uh, to make it lots of zeros, $50 million of uh, of a grant, uh, that means that we're going to be coming up with over $25 million of infrastructure improvements from the Ellison Eastern and our uh, parent companies. So it's a huge, uh, a huge undertaking, but it's necessary as far as to be able to get the rail running from uh, Sioux Falls to Worthington and be able to connect to two Class 1 railroads. Uh, we have access to the BNSF here in Sioux Falls, and we have access to the UP in, in Worthington. But if all of our shippers on that line would have access to both class ones, we believe that naturally rates will drop and that will be good for all the ag people as well as everyone else that uses uh, lumber manufacturers here in the county and uh, all the construction folks, everyone it will benefit from that. So this is an economic development issue that we're dealing with. So I'll leave it at that. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Questions for Dan? Commissioner Barth. Um, Senator Thune is on the Transportation Committee. Are we not going to write him a letter to uh, uh, representing Minneapolis County? Clearly, this is a great idea for our county uh, going forward. Uh, yes, we would appreciate any uh, support from the county to, uh, directly to uh, Senator Thune. We are working with his office as well as uh, Senator Round's office and uh, Congressman uh, Johnson's office to receive support from all those folks and as well as from the governor's office. And, uh, but uh, if you have uh, other uh, ways of uh, helping us gain that support, we, that would be much appreciated too, to let him know that Minneapolis County uh, supports it uh, fully. So that would be much appreciated. Dan, I'm curious if you've had any feedback from residents, particularly out in Brandon Valley Springs who will now have trains going by their houses? Uh, there's been some feedback. Uh, again, I don't follow uh, the social media that others do, uh, but uh, there has been feedback. But uh, the biggest thing that we're concerned about is uh, we, we, we want to provide a very safe and reliable and efficient rail line. And that is, uh, the line has been there for over 120 years. It's been unfortunate that that section hasn't been used for the past 40 some years. But uh, now that uh, 
with the industries changing, um, with the truck, uh, trucking industry uh, having difficult finding drivers, uh, the, the trucking rates have gone up drastically and uh, rail is becoming, becoming back in favor of uh, an efficient way of shipping. And so uh, we, uh, we plan and we still continue our line and we are very safe. And uh, the residents uh, can know that uh, Ellison Eastern takes uh, the number one virtue that we uh, live by every day is, is safety. So uh, they will know that uh, when we operate that line, it will be safe and reliable. Have you reached out to the leadership with, of those two communities? Yes, we have a meeting with uh, uh, Valley Springs this evening. And we haven't got a commitment from Brandon yet as when we get to meet with them. But, uh, yeah, we've reached out. Okay. So uh, we hope to be uh, doing the same thing with them uh, very shortly. Our, our application is due around the 1st of October. So that's why we're trying to gather all these uh, letters of support that go into an appendix uh, in our application. Commissioner Karski. Who have you met with already, Dan? Uh, uh, Nobles County uh, has uh, met and approved uh, and passed a resolution and ready. I have their letter back. We have met with, uh, Ru last night was uh, Rushmore, Minnesota. Tonight it's Valley Springs. Uh, Rock County, uh, which is Laverne, uh, they're uh, passing their resolution this morning as we speak. Uh, Clark Meyer is there. Uh, so we have the counties. Uh, I am, will be attending the state uh, rail board again this next week. I've been attending the several meetings. They are well aware of what we're doing. And we will be, uh, gaining their support next week and uh, filtering the, the letter to Governor Nome to sign uh, as well, going through the channels there. So uh, we believe that we've touched as many bases and uh, the Sioux Falls Development Economic, uh, Sioux Falls Development Foundation has forwarded the letter uh, to us. We have that. The South Dakota Soybean Growers Association has uh, given us a letter of support. I haven't I've tracked down the corn growers, but I anticipate that the corn growers will authorize a letter of support as well. So uh, we're trying to, uh, uh, there's a shipper, uh, the ethanol plant in, uh, in Worthington, or in uh, Laverne, is issuing a letter of support. And another uh, liquid uh, f a feed company in Laverne is also authorizing a letter because uh, they use our line right now, but they, wanna, they want to really gain access to uh, both lines because they know they'll become more competitive. Other questions? I'll make Comments? a motion to approve the signature of the um, chair. For this grant. I'll second that. Motion and a second. Other comments? I'll just say that I am going to support this today, but I mean, you know, this just like anything else that we deal with. I mean, I think this is an important economic development issue um, for our community and for a lot of folks here. But I recognize that there are folks that will, you know, feel adversely impacted by having trains run that haven't run. Um, you know, in 40 years when they build houses. And so I'd really um, uh, trust that you will work hard with those affected folks to um, design this, as you said, to be as <coughs> safe and as least um, intrusive <coughs> as possible for um, the folks who will be directly affected by it. Yeah, point well taken. We've, we've already met with a half dozen homeowners that are closely, uh, that have newer homes in the Brandon area, th and we've had meetings with those folks already. Yeah. So but we'll continue to, uh, to meet and discuss and, uh, and listen. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So we have a motion and a second. Any further comments? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously, thank you. That takes us to item 14, which is a briefing on the fiscal year 20 budget to be adopted September 24, 2019. Carol Muller. Good morning, Carol Muller, Commission Office. Before you, Second to the last time is the 2020 budget. You've been working diligently on that for several months. The next time you meet will be September 24th. And at that meeting, you will need to pass the 2020 budget. You do not meet next week because of the state association meeting. Last week you had a budget hearing and uh, we had some additional direction. We had some additional numbers to go through and put in there and therefore uh, there is an updated means of finance. And we are anticipating that this is the budget that you'll adopt on September 24th. The total 2020 budget is $92,067,110. Uh, in that, I think the two numbers that people pay most attention to are is uh, 1.75 million is from the opt-out that you approved in June that originally was starting off at 1.9. You've been able to drop that. And I will anecdotally just say, I thought it was gonna be higher 
to begin with when we started this process. So the fact you've been able to drop that is really good. The other number that you pay a lot of attention to is the general fund opt-out, and that is at $4.2 million, $4 million, which is a reasonable number for the scope of this budget. So Kim Adamson, finance officer for the county, is present also. So last chance to give us any thoughts, any direction before you see it, authorize it, and sign it next week. Comments for Carol? Thoughts? So my comment is, is that I, um, I would like to basically retract some comments that I made last week about the Jasper Ambulance. After our meeting last week, we got further information that clarified that the Jasper Ambulance did not actually submit an application for funding this year. Uh, there's at least one other ambulance that we haven't funded because we didn't receive a completed application for them. And so in order to be consistent, um, I would like to take the $1,000 out of the budget for Jasper Ambulance um, since we did not, in fact, receive an application for them for funding for this year. Any comments about that? Are you looking for a motion to do that? or? Um, I don't know that we actually need a motion on this. It's just direction that we're providing because we actually vote on this next week. Or not next week, the week after, since right. we don't meet next week. Madam Chair, sure and I uh, have a different view of things there, but I appreciate your perspective. Carol, since we didn't receive an application, do we have total application information from them on how much Jasper the community is supporting and how much fundraising No, we did do? not receive the application. How many calls they make? I, off the top of my head, I, it's very limited. They carry just a very- mm -hmm. 16 sections. Yes, is the property that they carry up there. Um, very small numbers that they go through and have, but I know that the, I understand that the residents up there really like to have the Jasper ambulance. Would that be correct, Commissioner Barth? Ma Madam Chair, yes, that is uh, correct. And uh, it seems to me that Dr. Luther has given us numbers that show, uh, you know, three or four calls a year in that in that area up there. Uh, that said, I, I also have a recollection that one year uh, there were uh, three calls to one address for a newborn that was having seizures, and uh, I'm sure the parents there were very thankful. And my comments have nothing to do with the quality of service provided by the Jasper Ambulance or really anything other than I think it's important that we be consistent and that you know if we're requiring information from ambulances in order for funding that we not provide funding to ambulances that don't provide us the information that we've requested. It's a very small dollar amount, so it's not based on the dollar amount either. Um, it's really just the principle of it and the consistency that I'd want to make sure that we follow through on. Commissioner Benninga. Did they give us any information on why they didn't fill out an application, no. which only takes a few minutes? No, we did not hear back from them. Hmm. I, I guess I did hear back, but uh, uh, it, it was in, in a lo longer um, message that I got, and the uh, Jim, uh, the guy from up there, his comment, he, he was wondering how come we haven't had any ambulance meetings for a while. He's not been invited or whatever. And I don't know that we have had any uh, for some time. It's been uh, quite a while since, uh, Gerald, since we had one of those governance meetings, I believe. Um, uh, so he, I think he felt out of the loop or whatever. And if I might, uh, I think we are still waiting to revise our ambulance ordinance as regards to uh, two people and also the, uh, the veto right of the uh, incumbent uh, operator. We need to uh, make a couple of adjustments to our active ambulance ordinance. Yes, and I've, I've visited too with um, Jason Gearman about trying to put a group together this year to really look at how we fund ambulances and to see whether the pot of money that we do allocate to ambulances could be allocated in a more appropriate or equitable manner. I think that's something that we've been also had kind of on the list of things to do that now we need to push forward. So, um, Commissioner Karski. 
But the fact that they didn't ask, and maybe there was a reason they didn't ask, they, they didn't know they had to ask whatever. I know a lot of these rural ambulances do a lot of different things, just like the fire departments, rummage sales and that type of thing to keep their operation running smoothly. But at the same time, yeah, $1,000 and $92 million is but a mere drop. But I, I would just be in favor of not including it at this point also just for the reason that the ask wasn't there and um, we haven't heard anything and you know, I, I think the awareness is there but we haven't other than maybe some communication directed through Commissioner Barth we really haven't heard or seen anybody that's asking for it so I, I'm, I'm okay with taking the thousand dollars out. We'll get to decide that next week when we finalize the budget, right? Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks, yeah. yeah. And so two. if you have some further direction after this meeting today that you could pass along to Carolyn, Kim, I think it'd be helpful if we have a final number that comes forward next in two yeah. weeks. So, And Commissioner Heiberg is not here today, so we can um, visit with her as well. Correct. Changing that number on that Tuesday would be a bit of a challenge because they we'd probably have to go into – recess while you guys recreated new documents that are out there so just yeah as a heads up okay well I'll take the responsibility to pull the commissioners between now and then and make sure we have a final decision on that okay all right so that takes us to um, item 15 which is liaison reports are there any liaison reports today Commissioner Karski. I have a couple of liaison reports. One, we had a public defender's advisory board meeting. Last one was in March. We had one just this morning. Um, the public defender's office, other than a recent loss of a paralegal, is fully staffed. They don't anticipate any issues filling that position. Um, budgetarily, they are well within their um, budget, including where the in the past, you know, we've seen issues with the professional services, uh, witness fees, et cetera. They're doing a fantastic job with their budget, my perspective. Um, so really no issues. We did have public input at the Public Defenders Advisory Board meeting this morning, so that was somewhat unique, but all, all went well. Um, the other thing we've been working on is the triage project. and. It, it's one of those projects that, as Aaron Serska said, it kind of keeps inching along, so I don't want to keep bringing it up too often without really having very good updates for you. Um, we've been meeting with Miles Schumacher, um, local attorney in town, who's been drafting our bylaws, and we are planning a meeting with uh, the mayor and uh, senior um, officials from Avera and Sanford to hammer out the final bylaws so that they can be filed with the state to, for the um, legal entity to be recognized by the state so that we can work with funding through the um, Development Foundation so um, money can be channeled for, through them. We can do our, R, our RFP for an executive director and the contract that we're going to have to run the triage. Um, you know, a lot of it goes revolves around the availability of the um, facility that we're looking at, which will probably be early next year before it can be remodeled. And then and we're, it, it, it keeps getting moved back, but with very good justification, but it keeps moving forward at the same time. It's been two, two steps forward and one step back maybe, but um, it, it is still um, being very actively, trust me. I'm in meetings continuously with it. Um, it meeting with different organizations on funding and legal processes and et cetera and making this work, so. Okay, thank you. Yep. And the other thing, I don't know if this is new business more than a liaison report. Yesterday morning I attended the uh, groundbreaking for the thank you. Veteran Cemetery. It was a very wet morning. <laughs> now there were two very small tents that the speaker was able basically to stand under. The crowd was phenomenal. We had hundreds of people there. Um, it's going to be a great thing for just within a very small, I mean, West River there's um, supposedly, um, I believe, 70,000 um, military vets and within a very 
close proximity to Sioux Falls, the number is about 40,000, 43,000, I believe. So the number of people that will be, you know, served by that um, cemetery and, you know, just as the, uh, the thank you to the vets um, and for their service, just giving them that location to know it's there for them and their families is a huge thing. It's going to be a beautiful place, and um, we're going to see more and more about it. But it was just a... The attendance, the turnout, and in, start, in spite of some really bad weather, it was a great event, great organization thing. So, All right, great. Other liaison reports? Commissioner Barth. A couple of them here. Uh, one is uh, we had a museum board meeting, and uh, in the last uh, nine months or so, they've had $160,000 uh, donated uh, to their uh, future use. 150,000 from an anonymous and 10,000 from our former uh, chairperson of the board, Mike, and uh, I'm sorry, I didn't write his name down, but I, I know him, I just, it's here. Uh, then I want to mention, uh, it was an article in today's paper that relating to uh, the uh, public advocate where a uh, individual in custody has been uh, incarcerated, uh, not incarcerated, has been in our jail for a while and is now in private mental uh, uh, status as the uh, people in Yankton refused to take him, saying they didn't have the room. Um, you know, the idea that there are maybe 20 people that are waiting to get into Yankton that they don't have room, uh, it's the state's responsibility to keep that operation going down there. They've refused to get it uh, 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 <laughs> nationally, uh, uh, not licensed, what's the word I'm looking Accredited. For? Accredited. They refuse to get it accredited. They get a new director every two years. They don't have the room for the people that we need to send there. And now uh, we're sending our uh, people to a private facility for mental health care. And according to the auditor, we get the bill. Why would we get the bill? Because the state refuses to uh, provide the facility. I mean, certainly, if, if we uh, had to pay the bill down there, uh, we shouldn't have to pay the cost of private care in, uh, if it's greater than the, the public would be. Um, there's there, the state facility at Redfield, they dumped all those people back into the mainstream. The, the penitentiary, rather than build a bigger penitentiary, uh, they passed a law letting everybody go sooner. And of course, when they're let go sooner, where do they go? They go to Minnehaha County. Then where do they go? They go to Minnehaha County Jail. The state has refused to do their job at the mental health, at the penitentiary, at the Redfield operation, and we, Minnehaha County, get to pay for it. Okay, that's that liaison thing. And then I want to say also that I went out after our uh, nuisance out in, uh, in rural Minnehaha County where uh, uh, we declared a nuisance, I think, at least three weeks ago. And uh, the, the party involved has uh, never come in to uh, uh, visit with us about what their plan is to remediate or what their plan is to dispute it. And uh, at this point, I certainly think there should be no impediment to moving forward with abating that nuisance. Okay. Any other liaison reports? I just would uh, state that the Homeless Advisory Board um, met again as a complete board, which is, you know, there are not a lot of people left on that board, but um, we did meet, went back over the report that we've received from the Augustana Research Council and have a plan to move forward and, um, and reconstitute uh, that we're looking at possibly combining with a board that the city um, has used for approving some of their housing um, loans and programs through HUD, and so we'll just continue to work on that, and we'll be reporting back as further progress is made. All right, so that's the end of liaison reports. Any new business? Any old business? Commissioner Barth. I would just like to say tomorrow is the anniversary of the 9-11 attack, a moment which united this whole country together like we've not been ever since. And it's very sad that we can't all be pulling together in the same direction to accomplish uh, the many things which our country uh, uh, 
is waiting to have done. And uh, it was a terrible time. Um, I happened to be in Fargo when the when the planes hit, and uh, uh, for some meetings, I was scheduled to be up there for a few days. Uh, I uh, drove all the way home and made sure I had uh, ammunition. Okay. Any other old business? Just great to see Craig Dewey back. Welcome back, Craig. Absolutely. Yeah. Congratulations on um, your new baby and and fatherhood. All right, so I would now entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone, for coming this morning. That's my question about executive session.